Hi everyone, my name is Cathy Gelding. I am a PhD candidate with Western Sydney University. Uh, I want to acknowledge um, that I'm making this presentation on Gadigal and Wongal country and express um, my great respect for all Aboriginal people, especially Aboriginal people who are watching or listening to this presentation. I really want to talk in this presentation about my PhD and I just want to share with you where my thinking is up to and some data uh, from my uh, PhD. And what I want us to think about is what is inclusion and, and how do we do inclusion? Is this a model of inclusion that is based on white knowledge. And if you look on the internet, uh, there are many images uh, there to look at of, you know, I just did a search on dot painting and uh, early childhood education. And these were some of the images that came up. It was uh, an educator's blog. And the image on the left, uh, the name of the blog is Australian Aboriginal dot painting for kids. And this person is writing about how, how to do dot painting um, with children. And so they have a number of resources and images. Now, if you look at the image on your right, you can see that the child is using uh, cotton buds or cotton tips to create a painting, what early childhood education commonly know as a dot painting. And in this second image on the right, you can see that the, what's been put in front of the child is a, is a book. Now that picture book is Bronwyn Bancroft's Why I Love Australia. And the person who has written the blog has talked about how the child was inspired by this book, um, Why I Love Australia by Bronwyn Bancroft. And it got me thinking as I read this blog and I read the images and I, I'm quite familiar with Bronwyn Bancroft myself, you know, is, is this a model of inclusion that is based on white knowledge? And as I said, I'm familiar with Bronwyn Bancroft and I, and I know her picture books are very popular in Australian early childhood services. And in what I understand about Bronwyn Bancroft, um, she, through her work, the art that she does for exhibition, as well as these picture books that she does um, for young children, she's always talking about the effects of colonialism. She is often challenging stereotypes and she's often expanding on the idea of dots. And so I just wonder, as educators, do we do this? Do we challenge colonialism? Do we uh, talk about stereotypes? And, and in that becomes identity. So what, what, is this, what is this experience teaching children about Aboriginal identity? And what, you know, as someone who I guess what uh, sorry what I would understand doesn't actually do dot painting um, what what does it mean when we use Bronwyn Bancroft in experiences like this in early childhood so I just want to jump to this idea of of what it means to be white we, we've been talking about dot painting and Bronwyn Bancroft and identity there. What, what, does, what does a white identity mean? And this country, Australia, um, we, uh, with our first white parliament and our first white prime minister had something called the White Australia Policy. And it was this White Australia Policy was based um, in this idea that there is no racial equality and that white superior uh, white people sorry white people the white identity is superior and everybody else including aboriginal people is unequal and inferior 
And Aileen Morton Robinson, who you might know, she wrote the seminal Talking Up to the White Woman. And it's uh, that text is 20 years old this year. And she talks about, she recollects the effects of the white pal policy had on herself and her family. And she was three when she um, remembers walking across the street in Brisbane, in Queensland, and she and her grandma walking the street Grandma fell over and hurt herself and Aileen was really distressed by this and screaming out and help and help and she says to her grandmother, why won't they help us? And her grandmother says, because they're not like us. And Aileen at three years of age understood what being white meant and what being Aboriginal meant. And she has continued in her academic career to really talk about whiteness. And again, that we represent uh, people as objects. Think back to those slides previously about the child and the dot painting and, and Bronwyn Bancroft, that, that we white people are the knowers and Aboriginal people are are the known and how does that whiteness come through and again Bronwyn Bancroft is really explicit you know in a lot of those children's picture books about the knowledge that she wants to um, for people to gain by reading those so so when we read Bronwyn Bancroft's work are we actually teaching children what Bronwyn wants to teach or with what we want to teach just some thoughts there so to go to my data now, uh, one of the services I collected data in, um, I wasn't there long before um, th some of the educators were telling me about this child called Rory. Um, he's five years old and he sometimes ident identifies as Gadigal. So you can see there from three different educators um, and three white educators, they're, they're giving made these different stories about this, this child. And yeah, so it was really, um, I was really interested in this. And so I really wanted to have a conversation with Rory myself. And so we were sitting down at, at the drawing table and uh, we were talking actually about quite a lot of things. And then he started, um, or I think I asked him a question about, one of his educators, Leah, who is a Wiradjuri um, woman. And so from asking him about his relationship with Leah, um, he started talking about how he likes Aboriginal people. And he identified in this story as a white person. And his understanding at five is that he understands that he's white and he also understands that he's not rude. He also understands um, that white people think Aboriginal people are clever and that they're better than Aboriginal um, people. And But he thinks Aboriginal people are, are clever. So I really thought about this conversation a lot and I, and I thought what's happening here possibly is that Rory understands that he's white and he's aware of his own racial identity. He is using white um, in, the, in the proper context. Um, and that's because he's been obviously taught about the meaning of the words black and white. So he, he understands what the word white means and he uses it in the right context. And he's, used it, he's using it as a politicised significant of difference rather than a descriptor of skin tone. Um, he is getting to understand how racism works and he sees, he sees that whiteness is a bad thing, but he understands that he is a white person is not bad. So he can differentiate from being a white person and whiteness. And he understands that white people um, are not all bad in the in the same way that not all black people are good and so at the end of this really like Rory likes 
Aboriginal people. <laughs> At five, he gets that. He's free to think, speak, draw and have relationships beyond race. So I thought it was important to also talk with Leah, um, Rory's educator, who um, is a Wiradjuri woman. And she, I think, has some really interesting things to say, as well as some challenges for us. And that's that, um, yeah, she, do, she doesn't think that Rory's um, had it explained to him enough about identity. Um, she talks about as a fair-skinned Aboriginal woman that um, in early childhood, there's not a lot of, um, or there's not enough resources um, out there for educators to, to use. And I talk about urban resources as well. So as a, as a uh, um, fair-skinned urban um, Wiradjuri woman, you know, for, for Leah, there's not a lot out there that um, is helping children understand, uh, understand the diversity and the complexity of, of Aboriginal identity. So I think there's challenges um, for us there. And we talked a little bit about the, the picture book, Fair Skin Blackfella, which they had at the service. Um, but again, she was looking for, for more. And so again, um, this is just to give you Rory Keeps um, talking about identity and understanding identity. And this, this was in the context of the Aboriginal flag. And that, uh, you know, again, he was just sitting around the table doing drawing and wanting to talk with other educators and children about who is Aboriginal and who is not. So in saying all of this and where I'm up to at the moment, um, I have taken Bell Hooks's words and my, my hope for Rory is that what he's doing it isn't about appropriation, but an appreciation that extends into the realm of the political. I hope that when Rory says he's Gadigal, Gadigal becomes a metaphor for freedom and into boundaries. Gadigal is vital, not because it represents the primitive, because it invites engagement in a revolutionary ethos that dares to challenge and disrupt the status quo. I hope that Rory's position will always be to stand in solidarity with it with Aboriginal people. And again, just with some more of Bell Hooks, that she really um, wants us to understand that um, we, our identity is, is more than skin colour. And so um, she doesn't, while we want to, and children obviously want to talk about skin colour, we are more than skin colour. And this book, Skin Again, is a wonderful children's book that she's written um, to help us teach children about having a deep understanding about what identity uh, means. Thank you.